Good morning. Um, I thought for my newsletter this week that I would touch a little bit on uh, what I'm currently working on at the moment. Uh, that actually happens to be a story that I crafted many, many years ago. Um, I wanted to do a story that was inspired by some of my grandkids. Now, I have a daughter who lives in Hawaii. And at the time, my oldest granddaughter was 11. So this was a long time ago. Um, and I had an idea for a portal fantasy and wouldn't it be fun to have it set in Hawaii and have there be doppelgangers with a alternate dimension that there's links between them. And um, I tried to do it for NaNoWriMo, which is National Novel Writers Month, which is held every November. Um, I tend to be what I call a discovery writer or pantser. Um, I've normally so organized um, that it's unusual to find myself as an author kind of writing by the seat of my pants. I generally know what I want kind of to happen in the story, but to plot things out and, and um, put it in the outline doesn't usually work well for me. This was one story that I tried that. I got about 35,000 words into it and the story went a completely different direction and the, the outline just went right in the trash because it had nothing to do with where the story was going. So obviously I didn't, I didn't win NaNo that year. Um, I sat on it for a while and then opted to um, give it another try and I talked with my oldest granddaughter who was 12 now and said I think rather than making this a middle grade story I'd like to make the main character 16 and since she's kind of the main character I asked her and she goes oh, but that would be embarrassing and I said but there would be kissing and she goes oh do it so I went ahead and I wrote that first story and then she came the following summer and I let her read what I had so far and she she didn't like who her character ended up with. And so I went ahead and wrote a second story but I just kept working on it and tweaking it and the kids kept getting older and the story got further and further away from where they were at and I wanted to include the younger grandkids and yeah I just didn't really do anything with it and then I thought about possibly publishing it but you know it is so different from anything that I've published before and I have followers who just kind of aren't into anything with a fantasy element so I you know I kept thinking the way the story is written it would be really an excellent way to do um, uh, like something for Kindle Vela. I don't know if you're familiar with Kindle Vela, uh, but it's a serialized way to read. You don't do it on your on your um, computer. You would do it on um, on your phone mostly. Um, but I thought this might be a good way to at least introduce it to the world and see where it goes. And I have been reading um, a lot of books. We I'm, I think next week I will probably go over some of the books. I think I went through six audiobooks while we were on the cruise. Um, I would normally, I let Alexa on my um, phone read to me if I can't get an audiobook. And I've been going through the Sweater Weather series, if any of you are familiar with that. Only if you don't have internet connection, which I wasn't willing to pay for um, on the ship, uh, you, you can't, you can't, Alexa won't read it to you. And, um, I prefer to listen while I'm doing other things. We're enjoying our cooler fall weather. Um, it, on a side note, uh, my 96 year old father-in-law. Now he's actually, um, not my husband's father. He is my first husband's father. My first husband passed away. Um, and dad doesn't have, uh, any, any family left. So uh, he's staying with us. He's living with us. He's sweetheart of a guy. I had gone upstairs during the recent uh, solar uh, eclipse and um, just to see how, because we, we could see some of it. And 
um, I said, hey, Dad, it's really getting dark in here. He says, yeah, I can't figure that out. And I, I had told him about the solar eclipse uh, before, but he didn't, he didn't remember. And I said, well, it's because of the eclipse. And he goes, well, I was wondering why it was getting so dark. I was wondering if it was getting late at night. So uh, he didn't have any interest in going outside, but my husband did, but he couldn't remember how to do it. And I have to keep reminding him, don't look at the sun. Whatever you do, don't look at the sun. So if you had a chance to um, uh, see it, um, if you're one of those lucky people to see the ring of fire, I saw some of the pictures that they took, and I guess uh, more southern from where we were was a good place to watch it. It's pretty amazing, pretty amazing. Um, but uh, as cold as it was yesterday, I didn't really feel a drop in temperature like they did the last time they had uh, an eclipse. So anyway, I hope you have a lovely day and a great week. And I'm going to include a little reading I did from this story, though it may have been edited a bit from when I did that. So we'll see how that goes. Goodbye. Thank you. So here we go. This will be part of chapter one. Kauai. One more month and Sienna McGregor would be done with all this. And she couldn't wait. Pulling her backpack over her shoulder, she merged into the stream of students flowing out of Kauai High School into the moist tropical air. After clearing the horde, she stepped into the spotty shade of a plumeria tree to wait. The idea she'd be attending college in a few months both excited and petrified Sienna. She tapped her foot to release some of the nervous energy, thinking about it always brought. Her dad had assured her college would be better than high school. But what if her shyness kept her from competing well with the higher level music students? In a perfect world, she'd someday perform in a Broadway musical. It never happened if she missed out on the best roles, because she was seen as too meek. Of course, Meg's late again. Andy Kellen's familiar voice said from behind, his deep voice a mixture of teasing and brotherly affection. Excuse me, brotherly irritation. And here was something, someone else, to fire up Sienna's nervous energy. But she didn't dare let him see it. All she had to do was get her stupid heart to settle down. She glanced over her shoulder at him, forcing her expression to turn into what her father liked to call her poker face. Sienna had often wondered how different her high school years would have been had Andy not broken his leg as a freshman. The bad break and subsequent infection had almost killed him. Rather than stress about keeping up with school during his recovery, he and his parents had chosen to hold him back a year. It'd been fun having Andy in the same grades as Sienna and Meg. He and his sister were two of Sienna's best friends. Then Andy had changed six months ago. No, that wasn't fair. She'd changed. One night at a beach bonfire, he'd morphed right before her eyes. One minute his sun-streaked sandy hair and tanned surfer bod had been something she teased him about because of the flirting vacation girls who always tried to get his attention. The next minute it'd been Sienna's heart he'd set a flutter. That day she'd been grateful for her shyness, seriously. There ought to be a law or something against crushing on the brothers of best friends. Meg had also taken to watching them interact a little too closely, closely for Sienna's comfort. As tempting as it might be to say something to him, it ruined everything between them. Don't diss your sister. They're the best. Andy stepped beside Sienna and she pretended to elbow him over the jibe. He responded with a kind and he responded in kind and gave a mock grunt. 
Hey, it's my job to keep her humble. Humble? Her jaw tight. Sienna tried to grab him in the ribs for real. You arrogant? Ooh, is that temper? Grinning, Andy caught her arm, his expression alive with interest. This is new. Oh, it is not. Even as Sienna tried to grab herself, jerk herself free, she knew it was a wasted effort. She'd helped him practice for a few of his martial arts tests by trying to attack him. Trying. Not only was he taller and stronger, but he had wicked skills. She'd never known anyone with reflexes as fast as his. Andy tightened his grip and grabbed her other hand, pinning her back against his chest. She breathed in the mild scent she always associated with him, the sun and a mingling of his aftershave. While his hold remained firm, she sensed that if she pulled away, he'd let her go. Sienna going all feisty in public, he whispered, his mouth close to her ear. I like it. His warm breath sent a shiver down her spine. The sense of intimacy surprised her. Andy only acted like this in her dreams. Um, hello, Meg said from behind. With a start, Sienna tried to pull away. Andy loosened his hold, but his hand lingered on her hands as he turned them both to face his sister. With his skin still warm on hers, Sienna didn't know what to do. Stupid shyness gripped her. Should she move away or curl her fingers around his like she wanted to? But then Andy released her hand and the opportunity slipped away.